Hi everyone, welcome back to my video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to identify double needs in our single cell RNA sequencing data using multiple model analysis. So double need presents a big challenge for us to analyze single cell RNA sequencing data. Previously, we used like a wiring plot to get rid of cells with the high N features and N counts. We assume that cells have high counts will be double knit. Recently, package such as the double knit finder has been developed. So, lots of people use that package to identify double knit in single cell RNA sequencing data. So today I'm going to show you how to identify double needs from single RNA sequencing data using hash tag method during data preparation. So the method is the same as CITE-seq. During sample preparation, we add antibodies against the cell surface protein and the antibody was attached with the shorter oligos. So for example, here we have three samples. The antibody could be the same or are different, but the sequence for the oligos are different. So in uh, sample A, the cells will be labeled as uh, oligo A, B will be labeled as oligo B, and then the same as C. Then we can mix no sample together, then pass through the drop seek machine. Because the cells are mixed, when we connect the drop knit from the drop seek machine, we will get a drop knit with a single cell labeled by different oligos, or we can get a drop knit with two different oligos, or even three oligos. Then we can see the next drop need as multiple needs because after sequencing we can identify them by the oligos number presented in the same cell. So the data that I'm using today for demonstration has eight oligos and you can see the data was produced from eight different human blood samples. Each sample was labeled with a CD45 antibody with a different oligo sequence. So later eight different samples were mixed together, then passed through the drop seq machine and sequenced at the same time. So you can download the data from here. I downloaded the, the data already, so we can go to R and do the analysis. First, let's load the packages, Surat and the Tidyverse. Now we can load the data. First is the RNA-seq data. The next we load the hashtag data. From here, we we'll just call it HTO. So you can see we have matrix data for RNA and HTO. So let's have a look at both the data set. You can see for the HTO data set, we have eight different oligos in the row names and the column names are cell buckles. So you can see here we have 16,916 samples in the HTO data set. Then in the RNA data set, we also have 16,916 cells. So the data was processed before we load in to have the same cell numbers between HTO and the RNA data set. So if you have your own data set, you want to do the analysis, so it is possible you have different cell numbers. Then you need to run the code to make sure both the data sets have the same cell numbers, the same barcode for the cells. 
So even here, we have the same number of cells. I can show you how to do the analysis. Just for a demonstration, you can see we can use the column names for the RNA and the column names for the HTL data set. Use the intersect function to create a joint barcode. So this barcode we have presented in both data set. Then we can subset the data, use the joint barcode for the RNA and the name for the HTL data set. Because here they are the same numbers, so I just use the code for a demonstration. So let's check if both data have the same cell numbers and the same buckles. If we run the code, you can see the answer is true. That means RNA data set and the HTL data set have the same number of cells. So now we can use the RNA matrix data to create a threat object. You can see we have a threat object here named as the PBMC hashtag. Next we can do pre-processing for the RNA data set for data normalization. Here we use the log normalize. Then find the variable features for the RNA data set and scale the data. In order to do multi-model analysis, we need to add the HTL data set into the threat object. So first we can use the HTL matrix data to create a HTL assay. Now we can add the HTL assay into threat object named as HTL. If we have a look at the uh, throughout the object now, you can see we have two assays here, RNA and the HTO. So we already normalized the data for the RNA matrix data. Now we can normalize the, the data for the HTO matrix data. Here we use the centered log ratio transformation as normalization method for the HTO data set. So let's have a look at the metadata for the threat object before we run next step analysis. So you can see here, cells are in the rows. In the column, we have the N count and the N feature for RNA, N count and N feature for the HTO. So now we created the throughout object contain both RNA and the HTO assays. Then we are ready to do the multimodal analysis. So next step is the key step for this video and also for this method to identify the double knit, single knit in our data set. So we run a function called HTO D max for the HTO assay. So this function will cluster the cells for the HTO data set and also identify which cell is a double knit, which cell is a single knit, or which cell is negative for any oligos. So I want to emphasize here, this is the key function we're going to demonstrate today. So let's run. So you can see here, we have a cutoff value for each one goes. So let's have a look at the matrix data for the HTLC. So you can see in the row names, we have eight oligos labeled as A, B, C, to H, and in the columns are cells, and here are the count for each oligos. If you have a look at the cutoff value down here, so it is very easy to understand how we label the cells as a single or double knit. So you can see here, for the first cell, only H 
has the value bigger than the cutoff value, so next cell is labeled as HTLH. So it will be a single need for HTLH. And for the second cell, you can see we have two values, H and G, are above the cutoff value. That means this cell contain the oligo G and the oligo H. So it will be a double need. Any cells below this cutoff value will be labeled as negative. That means the cell was not labeled by any oligos. So we run the key function for this analysis. Now we can have a look at the metadata for the threat object. So you can see now the analysis added lots of information into the metadata. So a uh, key information we are going to use is the HTO classification global. You can see the cell was labeled as single, double, or negative, and also the hash ID. In the hash ID, each cell was labeled as the oligo name or double or negative. So now we can have a look at the information in the metadata. First, we can have a look at the cell ident. Let's run. You can see each cell was enabled by a HTO oligos or double need or negative. So we can use the while input node to have a look at the n count RNA for each type of cells. Let's run while input node. We can zoom in to see the wire plot. You can see we have double knit HTO A2H and the oligo negative cells. Here is the feature for the n count RNA. So next we can set the cell items to HTO classification global because we know in this column we label the cells just by single, double, need, or negative. Let's set the cell items as HTO classification global. Then we can have a look at the cell items again. You can see now all the cells are labeled as single, need, double, need, or negative. We can use the table function to have a look how many cells are single, need, and how many cells are double knit? You can see here we have we have nearly fourteen thousand single knit, nearly two thousand six hundred double knit, and three hundred and forty six negative cells. We can use the while limp not function again to see the n count for double knit, negative, and single knit cells. Let's zoom in. You can see. So now we have the where input node for the n count RNA for single knit cells, double knit, or negative cells. So we label all the cells and we know the information of which cell is a double knit, which cell is a single knit, which cell is a negative. So we can start to do the cell clustering. First, let's cluster the cells for the HTO assay. So we can set the default assay as HTO. Then we can scale the data, run PCA, then run UMAP. So now we can realize the cells based on the HTO dataset analysis. So we can group the cells by single, double, or negative. Let's run the DIM plot and zoom in to see the cell clusters. You can see single need are labeled as 
blue color, double knit are in red color and green color are negative cells. You can see we have eight uh, uh, blue canisters here. That means uh, each canister was enabled by one of the oligos. So we can use the dim plot and group the cells by their hash ID. Then we know which cell canisters was enabled by which oligos. We can zoom in again. You can see now, for example, these cell canisters are labeled by oligo A, and uh, here, this canister was also labeled by oligo B. So we also have the uh, negative cells and the double knit. So here, the cells are canistered based on the oligos attached to the cells, and also double knit and the oligo negative cells. Also, we can use the heat map function to see the cell canisters. In order to uh, run the heat map, we can reduce the numbers into 5000. Let's run the heat map function. And we zoom in, you can see on the left hand side are the cells labeled by the oligos from A, B, C to H. Here are the cells labeled the with more than one oligos and uh, on the right hand side are negative cells. That means they are not uh, labeled by the antibody and the oligos. At the moment, we analyze the HTO data and the cells are clustered by their oligo lens. We know the human blood has different types of immune cells and we have the RNA data set. So we can run the cell clustering based on the RNA data set. So before we run the cell clustering on the RNA data set, we can plot the HTO cell clusters as plot one. Later we can visualize together with the RNA data set. So now we can set the default as the RNA to cluster the cells. Then we can run the standard workflow for single cell RNA data analysis. First, let's normalize the data. Then we find the variable features and scale the data. So next, we run PCA. We also run the elbow plot to identify the best PC for downstream cell clustering. You can see here, so we can use the PC10 for downstream analysis. Then we can run um, UMAP, use PC10, and find the neighbors. And finally, find the canisters with the resolution 0 0.8. We have 17 cell canisters in this data set. We can use the dim plot to have a look at the cell canisters. Let's zoom in. So here are the cell canisters for the single cell seek data from eight different donors. So at the moment, here, we have the single knit cells, double knit cells, and the negative cells in all the cell canisters. So we can visualize the cells by their uh, classification. Then we can see which cell is double knit, which cell is single knit, and which cell is negative. Let's zoom in again. You can see now. The cells are labeled by 
double knit they are red color single knit blue color and uh, some negative cells in green color and also we can group the cells by their hash id then we can see which cell are labeled by which oligos and also we have the negative cells and the double knit so the purpose of this analysis is to identify a double knit then we can just keep the single knit for our single cell RNA seq data analysis so before we subset the cells we can plot this analysis as plot 2 then we can subset the cells only keep the single knit so before we do that we need to set the ident as h2 classification global again then the cells will be enabled just the single knit double knit or negative so now we can subset the cells to keep the the cells labeled by single knit so we have a new threat object pbmc hash attack single knit let's run the standard workflow again for the single knit normalize the data find the variable features then scale the data run PCA we can run the elbow plot again you can see 10 still is the best PC for downstream analysis then we can use PC10 to run UMAP find the neighbors then find the cell clusters so you can see here we only have 15 cell cluster now with the same PC information and the same resolution as 0 0.8 because we get rid of the double knit and the negative cells so we can use the dim node to see the cell clusters we can zoom in you can see now we only have 15 cell clusters and here all the cells are only enabled by one oligos so they are single knit so now we can plot the cell clusters for the single knit as plot 3 and then we can visualize all three plot together so let's zoom in you can see now on the left hand figure are the cells clustered based on the HTO dataset and we can identify single knit, double knit or negative cells in the middle the cells were clustered by the RNA dataset but the cells were labeled by their oligo names or double knit and the oligo negative cells so on the right hand side we only have the single knit cells and the cells were clustered based on RNA-seq data so now we can use the data from here to do further analysis and the information from here could help us understand better the biological information so that's today's video tutorial I'm going to stop from here I hope my video can help your data analysis Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't to do so and share my videos with your friends. Thank you and I hope to see you in my next video.